<clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the planning committee. And um, so congratulations, first mayor, on your becoming the Lord, Lord Mayor. Uh, nice to see Amanda back, and um, and Phil, Phil Downing, welcome back to the committee. And, uh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's all right. It's nice to see you all. Anyway, the first item on our agenda is any apologies for absence? I have not any. Doing? Okay. Um, item two, any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests? Any? Yes, yes? yes please. Uh, I think I need to declare um, a personal interest item six, tree preservation order at um, for Gower College. I'm on the um, management committee of the of the college, so I'm declaring that, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Any others? No? Okay, item three then is to approve and cite the minutes of the previous meeting. That's the correct record. And you'll find them on uh, pages. There's two I talked to them. So. Sorry. Uh, so the first one is you begin on page one, two, page three. And page four, and the other one. Yeah. And the other one is the meeting on the twentieth of May. Can somebody move that as a true Move, record, please. Move, chair. Yeah. Thank you. Move, chair. Okay. Item four, then. I any items for deferral or withdrawal? Yes, chair. On the planning applications list, item two, application twenty twenty one. 0961 S73, uh, Bell Farm Rig Economy. Some of the work uh, has been done already, uh, and as a result, we need to revisit the conditions to ensure that the time scales and trigger points that we recommend tie in with the uh, work that's already been done. Okay. Thank you. No others? No. no. Okay. Thank you. And then we move on to item five. Um, is the first uh, TPO order. In the first one, we've been a provisional tree preservation order at uh, Birch Rock in Ponte de Lice. And uh, where are we? Alan? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, this is a tree preservation order served on a single tree um, that was going to be uh, removed to facilitate uh, two applications for. Um, Detached dwellings. Uh, the tree is actually on the neighbouring land, um, but a revision of the the plans following the serving of this order has enabled it to be um, incorporated into the the layout now. Um, several trees are being removed from the site, and this is the best quality uh, tree identified in their tree report. Um, as a category A tree, according to the British standard, and as such has is considered to have high visual amenity value and therefore suitable for protecting with a preservation order. Um, there's one objection from the, the landowner, um, which is detailed in the report. Um, looking at the objections, I don't think there's there's anything significant there and i i hope the um the appraisal shows that um this should be confirmed as a full order thank you alan did i see oh yeah Professor Downing, your hand went up. yeah thank you chair um i'd like to thank you for putting point first on the agenda <laughs> for my first meeting <laughs> Uh, the funny thing was, I was going to mention 1.4, uh, where the, um, the applications are yet to be determined, although the tree has now been integrated into the design. So that's telling me that it's been like accepted already. Um, and funny enough, I'm just going to repeat what Alan said. There are a number of trees on this. Mute. You've you muted yourself. How did I get back? Sorry, I don't know how I got back onto mute because uh, the arrow is nowhere near there. We'll try again. <laughs> all, uh, all the objections uh, that were brought up, I think, have been answered in the appraisal. Um, 
and I, and I think this tree is to be accepted. One, one thing, do you know the ash dieback trees that are on site? Will they be taken down as well? Yes. Yes. Because on the on the planning report, it doesn't say they'd be taken down. But anyway, thanks for that. Nothing else, Chair. Any other member wish to speak? No. OK, then, well, you see the recommendation now, Bill 6, is that it now be confirmed as a, a full order. Let's see those in favour, then. Who's taking this report? We go to the shop. Yeah, just yeah. read the names of us. So, so Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Black? Four. Councillor Downey? Four. Councillor Hans? Four. Councillor Jones? Four. Councillor Lewis? Mike Lewis? Four. Councillor Richard Lewis? Against. Councillor Pollitt Smith? Four. Councillor Des Thomas. Move for. Councillor Tyler Lloyd. Four. Councillor McGuire. Four. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes, this is um, an order covering two trees at Gower College, uh, Lloyd Um the, the college have uh, objected to one of the trees being covered, which is a lime tree. Um, th they've got two main parts to the to the objection. Um, one is that um, root gro growth has been found in the drains, and there's been flooding problems. Um, and the other other one is that um, there's been um, structural damage to the to the building. Now they've come in with an application to apply to take the tree down during the provisional period, but haven't provided any proof that this tree is responsible for either. And the the drains um, could potentially be they they have been cleared, but they could potentially be repaired. By using a liner. Now, whether it's possible or not, we don't know because we, we haven't been provided with any information, but it's a substantial tree and um, providing a lot of amenity value. So um, without further information, I, I believe it should be um, covered and um, the TPO confirmed. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Any members? Oh, Rick. Jobs. Yeah, it's only a question. If um, the applicant, Gal College, are appealing against it, how is it it came to our notice for us to put the TPO on? I'm wondering, was there some kind of building scheme? I seem to remember uh, something in the press about works going on there, and I'm a bit concerned about uh, you know trees. We've had area things before where they've been education land being sold and no TPOs put on the trees. And then, of course, people went along and I can see Councillor Thomas nodding his head because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I want to know, you know, who actually applied to put the TPOs on, if it was a college, or is it something that we just did by um, some kind of, um, you know, we go and inspect the, trees, which I didn't think we did. Yeah, the, the initial threat came to the other tree, uh, funny enough, which was, which is closer to the entrance and the entrance to the council property adjacent to the college. Um, and and uh, to get in these, I, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but uh, pods for, I believe. Um, um, homeless people were being put next door and they to get access, they wanted to remove that tree. Um, so that was the original reason, but the lime tree is also a very significant tree, and why, um, that's why it was included. I did say to the, um, I believe it was a caretaker at the Gower College, that you know if he could provide evidence that one that the damage has been caused by the lime, and two that there's no other way around it, you know we we would allow removal. Um, we would have to, um, but without that, 
I, I, I don't don't feel they provided that so far. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, thank you, Paul. Can I can I just yeah? Thank you. Yeah, uh, very quickly, um, Alan, in reference to your last point, you said we spoke to the caretaker, did you say? Has that been put into right then? Um, well, I, 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 I believe it was in an email exchange and they did come in with an application to remove the tree. So, so he took me up on my advice. He just didn't provide the substantive information to, yeah, to but sway the it in, in there. The requirement for the substantive information was that you verbally relayed it, but has it been confirmed in writing? Um, well, it's been confirmed in writing in my report um, dealing with the application. So we we, we got two we had two the things. The only running. reason I'm asking that is obviously they haven't responded, or they've they've either chosen not to respond, or you know. Uh, but yeah, they they haven't they 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 could have of course appealed to that decision, which they've chosen not to. Or they could come in with another application with the information required, and, yeah. and they haven't done that either. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I've got uh, Councillor Smith. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm very concerned, actually. There's quite a few applications for removal of trees or lopping um, because of the situation we're in. Lime tree to me is very substantial as a tree. I think we should be very careful exactly what we are doing because trees are significant as far as a lot of things are concerned. And I think people are just jumping in on the bandwagon to lop or cut down trees. That's all I gotta say, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. Yeah, just a question to Alan. Um, Alan, in your report, and you also stated, there's another alternative. Instead of cutting the tree down, they could put liners in. Have that been suggested to them? Um, I believe I put that in my report. Um, if, if, they, if they've read my report, they, they would have seen it. I'm pretty sure, yes. It is. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm always concerned that when officers go to uh, the, uh, the 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 chap who's in charge, I always like to go to the top of the tree. And if you go to the the caretaker, I mean, is he is the applications in his name or is it in the name of somebody else? You know, where are we going? Because you know, we can speak so quickly to caretakers or whoever. Um, does it get through? Because I remember the problem we had with the uh, tree, tree preservation order, uh, where it, was, it, was, it wasn't in the right garden and, it was, and the size out, outgrew the, the garden. You know, so I, I think we're very careful. We've got loads of trees. We're not sure of trees in Gower, for sure. Uh, and I think it's nice to keep them, but I think there, I always thought there's a proper protocol to go through. Something in there. The uh, the caretaker is the one that it, that provided the uh, objection to this order, and and that's why we've conversed with him. Okay, Councillor Thomas. Moved. Yeah, I I did remove my hand then because that's the question. I wondered if the caretaker was the correct person to to be having a conversation with Wingower College as an estates department. But you know, if 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 the application was in the name of the caretaker, then I, I accept that. I I, I apologise if I've got his job title wrong, but is I'm pretty sure it's sort of caretaker estates type manager. Um, I'm trying to remember yeah. his name now. It's, it's the person that was dealing with um, the, the firm clearing the, the drains and um, and with the tree surgeons booked to remove the tree as well. OK, thank you. Thank you. Do others? Can't see any other hands up. OK, well, you see on, um, on the page 10 what the recommendation is to confirm as a full order. 
the TPO at Gower College for the Brent Water Road. Again, we go to the vote now. Then. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Black? Four. Councillor Downing? Four. Councillor Evans? Four. Councillor Jones? Four. Councillor Mike Lewis? Four. Councillor Richard Lewis? Councillor Richard Lewis? Colin Smith? Four. There's Thomas. Councillor Des Thomas. Abstain. Sorry. Linda Tyler Lloyd. Councillor Mike White. Four. Thank you. Councillor Paul Lloyd. Yeah, four. Four. We'll go back. Councillor Richard Lewis. Against Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd. Four. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, Thank you, Chair. Move on to um, item seven then is the determination of planning applications under the Town and Country Planning Act of 1919. And uh, the first one on our agenda then is um, the item one, which is at 20 Bryn Hundred Street. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, this uh, application has been called into committee for decision by the ward councillors uh, and has met the threshold for calling as set out in the council's con constitution. The application site is an end of terrace, two storey, four bedroom property located on Bryn Hubbard Street on the corner with Eaton Road with a modest rear outdoor amenity space. Permission is sought to change the use to a children's home for up to three residents and three carers with a minimum of two at any one point and a maximum of three involving a care. A work package and a day, 365 days a year working in 12 hour shifts. Um, the properties on either side of Bryn Hubbard Street are predominantly residential in nature with a more mixed character along Eaton Road albeit residential in the vicinity of the site. So yeah, this is a, an aerial view from Google. Uh, it's an aerial view of the site indicated by the red arrow. Um, and you can see the rear garden and the extension are visible. Um, the green area to the rear of the extension is located outside of the application site, just to be clear. Um, if you can go on to the next slide, please, Ian. These are photos from Google Street View. So the top left, is the front of the application site looking south along Eaton Road with the road cycle lane and parking visible to the right hand side of the property as you look at the photo. Moving clockwise we have a view of the side and rear of the application site with the area of unrestricted parking along the side. In the bottom right is a view north along Eaton Road beyond the junction with Bryn Hubbridge Street and in the bottom left is a view along the site frontage looking down Bryn Hubbard Street with double yellow lines around the corner and residents parking along the site frontage. Um, if you can click on the next slide, please, Ian. Uh, this is the layout basically. So there are no external ch changes proposed to the property itself uh, and no changes proposed at ground floor level, which is shown on the bottom of the screen. Uh, so you've got a front and rear living room in the main body of the house and a kitchen, diner and shower room in the rear projection. And at first floor, three bedrooms and a bathroom would remain whilst one bedroom would be converted to an office for carers. So in terms of the application, we've had 14 letters of objection were received, along with a petition signed by 33 residents with concerns raised, including that the area should be kept as a residential area. It's not suited to the use. Concerns over noise, disturbance and additional comings and goings increased car parking demand in the restricted area, so not enough parking, and concern over the prospective nature of tenants and the impact on property values. In terms of consultees, there have been no objection from the local highways authority, and while social services have outlined some concerns, they haven't formally objected. So from a policy perspective, the application is residential in nature with an element of care for older children, 
aged 15 to 19 in a residential area. The issues raised by social services are not supported in planning policy and will be controlled by a separate legislation. Indeed, the proposed use will be regulated by the Care Inspectorate for Wales, um, and the property is considered to have sufficient rear private amenity space for the use. In terms of parking requirements, four bedroom property should have three spaces and the proposed use would generate the same parking demand. So there's no material planning difference in terms of the proposed use. Staff wouldn't be eligible for a parking permit, but there are unrestricted spaces nearby and it is considered to be in a sustainable location. Conditions would be attached requiring cycle parking and also limiting the number of residents to three given the modest accommodation and need for support staff. So it's not considered that the proposal will result in significant noise and disturbance over and above a four bed dwelling. Um, the makeup of future residents and devaluation of property is not a material planning consideration and there's no evidence of antisocial behaviour either. Uh, no section 106 agreement is required or considered necessary to make the proposal acceptable in planning terms as set out in the officer's report. So the recommendation is for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. I got um, few speakers lined up. First, there's the ward member, Councillor Holly. I would move to Chris. First of all, can I apologise? I am told that I didn't inform you early enough to be included in the link. Well, th thank you for that anyway. Um, I, I, I would ask the committee to throw this application out for a number of reasons, and I will go through those now. Um, one of them is if you go to Planning Policy Wales 11th edition on paragraph 33, it states that good design is if is a fundamental to create substantial uh, sustainable places to where people want to live, work and socialise. And I have to say, um, when you've got, you know, let's be blunt about it, these ch uh, young adults, and if you've got up to six adults in in this room in this particular building, I think that's not sustainable. And I think it's just a bit a little bit overcrowded. After all said and done, this is a business, and you know we we are asking um, this uh, care company to actually look after these young people in, the, in these conditions. And I have to say, I find it it, it generally seems to be overcrowded to me. And uh, my colleague will talk about the parking, but I, I have to say I find it quite surprising that we even consider this isn't overcrowded. There, there is an element on here also, um, which I have to say I found quite alarming really, that this report obviously has come from the Highway Authority, where it indicates that the uh, parking adjacent is on Eaton Crescent, now, I know the majority of people here would know that Eaton Crescent is actually in uh, the Uplands Bryn Mill, whereas Eaton Road is in uh, Benavred. So you would, you would think to yourself that uh, somewhere along the line, someone would have read this report. Generally speaking, I think this is a, this is completely over the top, uh, and, and I, I hope the committee will, in its wisdom, throw this out. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Black. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, very much support what Councillor Holly says. Just a couple of technical issues before I start. First, there are in fact two references in this report to Eaton Crescent as opposed to Eaton Road, which um, gives, doesn't give me much confidence in the report itself. Secondly, um, the plan which, uh, which accompanies this planning application, the extent of that plan is greater than the, than the land that is actually registered, the land registry in the owner's name. Therefore, we are actually being asked to give planning permission on um, an area of land which is greater than that, which is actually registered as 20 Brynhoffer Street. So I'm assuming that the certificates have been checked on this in terms of land ownership and, and, and that we are satisfied that that is correct. Um, but it is a bit concerning that, that they are applying for planning permission for an area greater than that, which is actually registered in their name. Um, my, my, my concern about this is, is the parking. Um, I, I've, I've read the highway comments on this and I, I, I don't question the fact that, you know, three parking spaces is what you would get for a four bedroom property. But it does seem to me that that the assumptions in terms of how many parking space, how many parking spaces this would generate are wrong. The, um, the highways say that um, they are considering one space per resident staff 
one space per non-resident staff and one space per four bedroom for visitors. Now, first of all, in the application, it says that the three um, young people who are going to be in this property will be receiving one to one support over, on a 24 hour basis. That means there will be six people in this building at any one time, not, not just three. Now, that means that three of those people will be caring staff who will no doubt have cars. Secondly, that this is catering for an age group between the ages of 15 and 19 who are going on, who are being trained in construction techniques. Now, I think most of us would assume that once those young people reach the age of 17, they will be driving. Because obviously, if you're involved in construction, you need to be able to drive. And I suspect that some, at least one or maybe two of them will have their own vehicle. So I believe that this property will actually generate f more than three cars to actually, if, uh, that, that, which is envisaged by highways. And for that basis, it does seem to me that this is going to cause a major problem in an area which is already under pressure in terms of parking. As highways have pointed out, Brent Hufford Street is a restricted residence only parking zone in front of this property. Um, I was interested in the photographs which we saw in the presentation from Google Earth. I'm not sure when those photographs were taken, but every time I've driven past this property, the three spaces at the side of this property have been fully occupied. And so it does seem to me that, that, um, that finding that this will add additional parking um, pressure onto the area, onto Brent Hufford Street, and I think it will cause problems for the area as a result of that. So on that basis, Chair, I would ask that this, this, this is that this application is 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 is, is overthrown, is is, is um, refused. It does seem to me that that, that uh, we are basically talking about six people permanently resident in this property, generating far more than three cars. And on parking grounds alone, I think it's it's it should be refused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And I agree with uh, the comments about the parking and Councillor Black highlighting the uh, fact that, yes, they will be able to drive. But my question is, it's something that Andrew said, it's about the consultation uh, to do with social services and that they didn't formally object. Well, it's in the report that they've uh, got these concerns uh, regarding the number of children's homes uh, being opened in Swansea which places additional pressure on key services. So if that's not an objection, I'm not sure what it is. And I understand about the legislation with CSSIW or whatever name care expect, Wales, sorry, uh, now. But why consult with social services? They respond and then we ignore it. And my other point is the same one as I made for the one down Roystermouth Road. I couldn't see the amenity space at the back that we are talking about. I know there's going to be a bin stroke cycle store at the back, but really I can't see what amenity space was left. And perhaps, you know, it says it's adequate. What is adequate? It's not really a descriptive word. So I would like to know more about the uh, amenity space at the back. And uh, I said I do agree with the previous comments. Thank you. Councillor Richard Lewis. Well, Chairman, um, uh, following Mary Jones's comments, I, I quite agree with her and certainly with Chris Holly. But I think the thing which I find strange, we had a very similar application last month whereby the uh, comments by the uh, Social Services Department were certainly totally opposed uh, to this development in Oystermouth Road. And yet, because it was a different, uh, we as a council, I voted against it there. I thought it was an outrageous one to put forward. As far as I was concerned, it was certainly wasn't the quality of, of a development that I, I would welcome. And I think that again, where parking comes in, uh, this is this could be a 24 hour, seven, seven days a week. I think it, it is totally wrong. Uh, like the one, I'm only, I hope that the, the members who voted in favor of the one in Oystermouth Road, I'm sure they will live to regret that one because I think it, it is in a, a dangerous position. This one is not quite so bad. It's in a residential area. Chairman, point of order. I mean, why is he discussing something about Oystermouth Road? He shouldn't be talking about that. Focus yep. on the, the, the case that we're dealing with today, please. And the planning up. Well, Chairman, I, I, you've got to look at what you've done in the past. And I thought what we did in the past was wrong. I made it perfectly clear. And it was a, a split vote. It certainly wasn't a, a unanimous decision. And I think that 
And we should have listened to what social services. You know, we employ social services, and if they put in a recommendation that they believe it's wrong, then who are we to say that they're, they're, they're not right? I just think that we've we've got to get our details right. I'm pushing stuff through as well, and because an outside body will be monitoring it, we are the ones that give the give the planning consent. We are the ones that will probably upset the neighbourhood by a, a large uh, operation of people coming and going all the time for young people. And and when I saw the play area at the back of Oystermouth Road, well, I couldn't swing my cat by its tail in that area. And for the kids to go in that sort of area, it was like a concentration camp. I feel that it's wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm totally opposed to this one as well. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, as everybody knows, I live in the area. Um, i got to agree with uh, Councillor Black and Councillor Holly. Um, those photographs don't give it um, the justice that Brynavrid um, is concerned. It's a very busy, busy uh, business area. You've got a very well used um, uh, burial burial people. You've, we've just lost four spaces on Brynavrid Square due to uh, a cafe having a, an external area for people to sit out in of outdoors because of COVID. Um, you've got a number of businesses, so I, I, I can't uh, agree with this uh, proposal. Thank you. Councillor Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, I don't live in the area, so. Uh, um, but I've got to be honest. I'm thinking if this was in my area, more than likely I'd be bringing up the same reasons as, as Councillor Holly and Councillor Black. So I'm waiting for the officer to respond because this could be three adults working there and three 19-year-olds, which does bring it in the six adults. So waiting for the officer to respond to that. And at the same time, if it's three people working there with three cars, the three 19-year-olds could have three cars as well. So to respond to parking, I know that uh, off-street parking, um, it's not up to us to say where you can park and where you can't park. Um, but I'm just waiting to hear on those two points, which to me were very important. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll then um, I'll start with the, the comments that, as they were raised and go through, and then I'll pass over to Amanda in highways in case she wants to add anything further. Um, Andrew, Andrew, I've got best comes to Thomas wants to speak. Sorry. So, sorry, Thomas, and then we come okay. back to you. Yeah, okay, thank, thank you, Chair. Yeah, a lot of inflammatory um, r remarks have been made, um, which is um, unnecessary, really. Um, first of all, um, the, there was question mark about the design of the property. Well, you know, <laughs> the design is no different than hundreds and hundreds of others in the area. Are there local members saying that the that the design in the area isn't good for residential use? Of course not. The design is, you know, w what it is, and it's been um, been th there for many many years. And and, it, and um, to a certain extent, what Councillor Downing has said, there are many homes, I'm sure, w with adults uh, and grown up children living there w w and all using their own vehicles. I know there are there are problems with excess vehicles and I know that every 17 year old wants to drive, but, you know, that's not a planning issue. Um, Care Inspectorate Wills will decide whether the facilities are suitable or not. That's not for us. We're design, de deciding just on the on the planning merits. Um, planning permission for land not in the ownership. That's not an issue. You can apply for for, for planning permission for land not in your ownership. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the, quite right. And I think it's pretty nitpicking um, the question of Eaton Crescent and Eaton Road. OK, it doesn't make any difference to the application just because, uh, you know, a road to a, or, or a Crescent, the, the name is slightly different. We've got to think of the children that these are 
the accommodation is for. They deserve a decent place in life. And if these three young children are going to be trained in um, in in the building trades, then, you know, they're not going to be youngsters who are going to terrorise the place. I mean, I'm afraid of many... Um, uh, members of the general public, if they hear of a children's home opening close to them, it's it's you know it's going to be a terrible situation. Uh, kids are going to be running riot and causing mayhem. It's it's not going to happen. I mean, this appears to be a growth industry. I'm aware of one um, inquiries being made in my area for for a single use, uh, um, a detached property for a single use person to be living there. But, you know, we'll deal with that if and when it comes before us. But these people with with illness need a decent start in life. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Hello. Hello. Chair, can I come back on a couple of comments? I'm afraid not, Councillor, no. Can you hear me now, Chair? Yeah. I'm concerned, having been working in Brynavrid for a number of years, I am so for these children or young adults having a place to live and having somewhere to cement their, how can I say, their dreams. But this is totally wrong. We've gone through the Bryn Mill Road, etc., and I just think that putting these children in Bryn Hamrid is totally inappropriate. And that's the reason I, I can say, I can think of dozens of places that would be appropriate for this type of um, usage, but that isn't one of them. I remember that many years ago when I worked there, it is an area that has got antisocial behaviour, shall we say, that I hope these young people would not be encouraged to uh, participate in it. That's all I've got to say, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Black, you wanted to come back. Well, yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. I, 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 can I just reject this claim we've, of inflammatory comments? I mean, we've dealt with this on, on purely on the planning issues. Um, and, and parking, despite what Councillor Thomas says, is a planning issue. Uh, and, and, the, and how appropriate it is to the area is a planning issue. I think it's also pertinent, although Councillor Thomas is absolutely point of correction. Uh, uh, Thomas is a, point, a point of correction, Pete, if you allow me. I was referring to Richard Lewis's remarks about a concentration camp on the Oystermouth Road oh, okay. application. OK, well, I, I mean, but as I was saying, parking is, is, a, is a planning issue. And in terms of the, the curtilage, I do accept that you can apply for planning permission for an area which which you don't own. And that's perfectly correct. All I asked was that we could check that the certificate, which you have to fill in on the planning application, accounted for that so that everything was in order. But I think this is an important issue in terms of the impact on the amenity of nearby residents, as is the issue which Councillor Mary Jones raised about the amenity space which is available for the residents of this property um, which basically consists of a small yard at the side of the house but that, that was the point I wanted to make thank you chair okay thank you and now Andrew did you want to come back up on sideways thank you chair um yeah in terms of the, the points raised with regard to um it's worth pointing out that the carers don't actually live at the property so obviously you've got the, the three children there and then there will be carers there on a one-to-one -one basis at all times so there's three bedrooms in the property for the residents and then the additional space for the carers as and when they're there so we don't consider it to be over development of the site um in terms of the, the error there is an error in report in two places where it refers to Eaton Crescent it's just that it's just simply an error um, the case of the, the highways officers considered it on the basis of the site plan uh, viewed the site in context and considers it to be acceptable um, what you'll note in the report um, just after the procedural matters 
is a note that the site plan has been amended during the course of the application, so issues have been raised uh, and that issue has been addressed in the report. Um, in terms of parking assumptions, well, this is a four bed property and, and as with four bed properties anyway, you could have grown up adults live in there. What the applicant has said, so you could have two parents and however many children over the age of 17. It, it, as I said, they could be under, that's just the difference. We, we can't look at things out from a planning perspective. What we need to look at is the parking demand, which as I said, we work to maximum parking standards. We've got the SPG um, that's been adopted by members, which sets out how we should be calculating these figures. And that's what we've calculated in accordance with. So the parking demand is for three um, parking spaces, which is the same as the existing situation. Um, allied to this, as I've just noted, uh, the carers would be supervising residents on a one-to-one -one basis. So as I said, it's not considered there's going to be six cars. If anything, um, given that um, the existing property could apply for residents parking permits, whereas um, the future workers wouldn't be able to, there'll actually be a better chance of securing residence permit parking for future residents. In terms of so, the comments or from Councillor Jones, uh, in terms of consulting with social services, we have consulted with social services and we do seek their input into these applications because it's important to understand where they're coming from in terms of their issues. However, as they need to be mindful, we need to look at the planning merits of, of, the, of the case, uh, which is why we've noted their comments um, and gone back to them and said, if you can provide any planning reasons and evidence why this is an issue in this location, uh, then we will certainly consider that. But they haven't come back to us with anything else. Uh, and we consider the residential use in the residential area to be acceptable. Comments about the amenity space are noted but this is the amenity space for a residential property already. There's no change. As I said, they, they will be having parking, cycle parking uh, and, and refuse storage in there as they might already be doing in any event uh, and could be having. These are more issues for if, if that amenity space is acceptable for a residential property, we've got no uh, planning reasons to say why it's unacceptable for a similar residential use for three resident children uh, effectively. Um, and that would be for the care inspector of Wales to determine whether it meets the standards in terms of indoor and outdoor amenity space. Um, so, as I said, in terms of parking, we think it's acceptable. The highways officer hasn't raised any uh, objection. And in terms of Bryn Hubbard, it is a residential area and this is a residential use. So we've got no evidence of any antisocial behaviour. So I'll pass over to Amanda in case she wants to add anything further in terms of highways. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Amanda, did you want to add anything? Uh, yes, Chair. I'd just like to back up really what Andrew has just said. Um, you know, I live in a in a three bed house and there's four of us and we all drive. You know, I've got one parking space. Just got to take a chance um, and, you know, find an appropriate mm. place to park. And 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 I'm lucky that my area is not unrestricted. This is restricted and is well controlled by civil enforcement. Um, go back to exactly what Andrew said. We, we've we in terms of uh, um, determination of, of plan applications and uh, the thinking ahead to an appeal situation, we we can only look at the fallback position. The fallback position in this instance is uh, that it would require three parking spaces, albeit that there are none. We've assessed the proposed use in terms of staffing, in terms of bedroom numbers, and it's the same number. It's three bedrooms, three parking spaces. Therefore, there is no material increase. Um, there might be issues with on-street parking currently at the site, but it is not considered, the Highways Authority uh, opinion is it is not considered that the situation would be exacerbated. And in fact, there could be some gain involved, as Andrew pointed out, because the staff will not be eligible to apply for the resident parking permits that the current residents would be able to, park, to uh, apply for. OK, thank you. OK, Councillor Black, if you wanted to come back, and then we've got uh, Councillor Willow. Just a couple of things, Chair, in response to that. First of all, I'm interested in what, what um, planning officers think one-to-one -one means, because in my view, one-to-one -one means if you have three residents, you have three workers. Otherwise, it's one to three. So, you know, if you've got three residents living there, you've got three workers in there, and that generates three cars. And in fact, 
in the, and this comes with my second point in the highway observations the three cars which are referred to also appear to relate to the the people working at this property uh, yes a, a resident person can apply for a residence parking um, place ass assuming that they re-register their car at that property but then that's an additional car on top of the three which have already been accounted for it does seem to me that this this calculation of just three cars when you've got six people at this property is going this is not a normal residential property this is a business it, it's not just about residents there are people actually conducting business at this property as well so it does seem to me that this is more than a residential property and will generate generate more than just three cars and that is the concern I have in terms of the impact on the local residents amenity. Thank you Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you Chair. Just a quick point. <clears throat> in relation to the social services uh, comments, it is quite clear in those comments that um, they see a proliferation in a number of children's homes cropping up across Swansea and they're not in favour of it. Simple as. That's what they're saying. They don't like all these children's homes going in Swansea, whether it's been over it, mumbles, whatever. So the principle of uh, more children's homes, social services are not in agreement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I can't see any other hands coming up. And uh, so you can see the, uh, if I can remind the people before we go to the board, we're looking at planning, only the planning issues regarding this case today. The other things like like the one previous one we dealt with are dealt with by other organizations and agencies. But the recommendation there is one of approval, and we will uh, go to the vote then, please. <clears throat> yeah, Councillor Cyril Anderson. Against. Councillor Peter Black. Against. Phil Downing. For. Will Evans. For. Mary Jones. Against. Mike Lewis. For. Richard Lewis. Against. Paulette Smith. Against. Des Thomas. For. For. Linda Tyler Lloyd. Against. Mike White. For. Uh, Councillor Paul Lloyd, a full chair. Uh, so that's all done. So that will be voted for it again. Thank you. Okay. Casting vote from the chairman as that's approved now. Thank you. All right. And uh, next item then is uh, final page 55 is the South of Bay Road in Bucket. You'll find that on page 106. Sorry, page 55. And that's Chris. You are on mute, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So this, this site relates to um, land located off Glebe Road in Lacha. Um, the, the site is opposite Mariah Chapel. Um, members may recall about four or five years ago, we granted a planning permission for 92 houses on what was phase one of this development. Um, the application before you today is for phase two, um, which comprises 23 dwellings. The overall site, so phases one, which which is more or less all built out now, and the current proposal, um, they're all allocated within the local plan, um, and it's actually site H132. So the application before you today is the south eastern part of H132 um, and as I say the, the remainder of the site is, 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 is has been built out so um, if you can see the the road coming down off Glebe Road is called Ford uh, Mariah um, that's the start of the phase one development those houses have been built out um, and there's other houses to the west of the proposed development which which are also from 
part of phase one. So the the layout of this current application is, is there before you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are 23 dwellings being proposed, including three affordable units. Um, the 23 dwellings comprise 11 different house types, all of which are of a modern design, um, and the majority of the proposed house types are already reflected in the phase one development. Um, the layout of the scheme is quite characteristic of a, of a modern housing estate and again reflects the the layout of the phase one development um, although the new development now does propose um, green infrastructure and makes provision provision for suds requirements um, there's been a number of uh, amendments to this application uh, prior to being presented to the committee um, but following all of those amendments uh, there are no objections from any of the consultees Everyone seems to be quite content with the application, although there are or have been three objections received from local residents. Um, these are set out on page 60 of the report. Um, we are recommending the approval of the application um, subject to conditions and the applicant entering into a section 106 agreement. Um, and those recommendations are set out on page 106 onwards. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And um, we have Francesca Evans did you, from Barrettons. Did you wish to speak? Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, committee. Um, I, I registered to speak just in case anybody had registered to um to speak against the application. So um. I didn't have anything in particular to add uh, over and above the um, the sort of the fair and balanced um, recommendation set out in the officer's report. Um, so I, I'm not sure if anybody has registered to speak against the application, but it was um, more to just register to speak um, just in, in reply to that, really. So I'm, I'm not sure um, if anybody has registered to speak, but if not, then I'm happy to you know, for, for, the, for the presentation to to take place as per the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much. No, no one else is ready. Um, you speak? Oh, Black. Yeah, thank you, Church. Could you just go through the um, affordable housing provision? Because it seems that we've got we're looking at three affordable houses out of twenty-three, which seems to be quite a low percentage. I'm just interested in how this off-site affordable housing contribution works. Yeah. Okay. We'll get that in a moment, get to the answer. Anyone else? Yeah. Can I say? Oh, Councillor White. Yes, um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, page 87 of the report, Chair, it obviously raises concerns about damage caused through shrubs, through vehicles, uh, where they're going to be parking. Is there a possibility, especially around um, the plots number 12 and 13, that we can uh, put a condition that, um, that uh, rails are, uh, can be installed, knee, uh, actual knee rails can be installed to protect the, the shrubs rather than being damaged or being trampled on. Is that is that something we could look at, Chair? Okay, yeah, I, I can work. Anyone else? Okay, just a few points on there. Then, um, Chris, anything on that? from council Black about affordable housing and uh, from council yeah it, so in, in terms of the affordable housing um for, for this part of swansea the requirement is 15 percent uh council black um so what my colleagues have worked out is that um 15 percent of of 23 houses uh equates to uh, i think it's it's just under three and a half houses so I think it's 3.45, um, my memory serves me correctly. So what we've done, we've actually got the um, the three affordable houses on site. Um, and I don't know if Ian can go back to the presentation. The, the houses are, uh, it's a block of three, which are in the, in, in the kind of middle part of the site. Um, so there's one three bed house and two two bedroom houses. Um, so yeah, it's the three more or less right in the middle. 
Um, yeah, it's those three there. Um, and and to and be, because the fifteen percent equates to three and a half. Obviously, you can't have half a house. So what we've done, we we've, we've asked for um, a sum of money in in addition to the three houses to make up the the half house contribution, if you like. So that money would be used um, on a site off you know off site elsewhere. Um, so that that's pretty much the best we could do given the circumstances. So that's why we've got um, this, as I say, slightly um, odd scenario of having three houses on site and then an off site contribution to, to kind of compensate for the three and a half that we should have. Thank you, Chair. Can I just ask who that money goes to and was it the housing revenue account or a housing association or is it just uh, in general? How does that work? Um, as far as I know, I think the council hold it or so our housing enabling officer, they hold the money. Um, and I, in most cases, I think they, they basically pool that money until there's enough in, enough money altogether to the fund a development on a different site. Okay, uh, John will, Jonathan may, may know more about that actually, because he, obviously he will be drafted in the 106, but. Come back to that. Oh, sorry, there was one other one, and then Councillor Thomas wants to speak. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think um, the, the query was raised about sec, uh, page 87. So page, page 87 of the report uh, sets out what um, our landscape officers initial comments were in the application. Since then, the application has been revised. So um, if you if I could take you to page um, 90. The, the the final set of landscape comments are set out on page 90. So those are the landscape comments um, which have been made following the revisions of the application. So um, obviously following all the different revisions, the landscape officer basically withdrew his initial concerns to that element of the proposal. Yeah, okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, Councillor Thomas, then I can see Jonathan wants to come in. Th thanks, Chair. J just two points. Um, I note the um, application is for 20, 23 homes, is it? Um, I apologise if it is in the report, but is there any advantage falling to the developer that they're um, applying for um, blocks of um, this sort of number 23 um, homes at a time? Does that give them an, you know, any, any monetary advantage by not um, providing, you know, finances for education and so on and so on that, that we would normally get w with a larger development all at one time. And then the other um, point is the use of render once again. Um, I, I noticed recently um, some of the development that's taken place, I think it's on the Havard Bypass, right opposite where the electrification sidings are for the for the railway. Um, the render on those properties relatively, I don't know what, four or five years are, are already in a poor state. And, um, you know, it's something that we're just storing up for the future with the use of render. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, well, in terms of the size of the development, um, 20, I think initially we did have a pre-app to, to try and fit 25 houses on the site, but I, I think that was uh, slightly cramped. So the developer has obviously come to us um, now proposing 23. Um, the reason it's limited to 23 is this is the this basically completes this site allocation. So um, the the southern end of the site is the settlement boundary in the UDP. Um, so if Ian can go back to the um, allocation, um, which was put up in the presentation, you will see that this basically runs off this and completes this allocated site. Um, so. Yeah, there's no other motive really, uh, Councillor Thomas, other than this. This is just the, the the completion of the development. I'm I'm not quite sure why they did it in two phases as such. Whether they they hadn't acquired the land for this particular part of the overall site, I'm not sure. But um, in terms of education, and you you mentioned that 
um, the education department have raised no objection to the application. They, they've commented that the local schools all have um, kind of sufficient capacity to deal with the number of children generated by this development. Um, in terms of the material, the, most of the elevations are a brick, as from what I can remember. Um, I think there may be some house types with a limited amount of render. Um, but of course, it all depends what what, what specific materials they use. Um, in terms of what, what actual product. It says red brick and cream render. Yeah, so I think it's mainly red brick from from remembering. I've only put a selection of the um, the elevations up, so the, these aren't by any means all of the different house types, but. Um, I think that the problems that some developers have had with render with this um, through render, what they could be call it, where it's kind of self coloured. Um, which this appears to, yeah. Which with, this yeah. appears to be. It says cream monocouche render. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we can put some kind of informative on any decision granted to bring the developers attention to problems that we've had in Swansea if that would be of use well yeah I think it's the minimum we could do is to bring attention to the to the fact that there there, there are issues with, with with the local climate yeah okay I mean we can I, you know we, we I think we can do that I I, I suspect that a lot of the developers are, are already aware of this problem, but yeah, we can certainly put a, an informative on to that effect if, if you think it would be useful. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Jonathan, you have the time. Thank you, Chair. I just want to uh, confirm the query about the affordable housing contribution from earlier on. Uh, yes, that sum will be paid to the council prior by the developer prior to the first occupation of the first affordable unit so that some then will be used by the council off site for affordable housing provision and it'll be it'll be managed by the council thank you okay thank you Jonathan. well it's okay well let's see anyone else wishes to speak for um you see the recommendation that on page 106 is one of approval let's see if we will now bring the <laughs> take the vote as normal Yep. Still and Anderson. Approve. Peter Black. Four. Phil Dunwin. Four. Phil Evans. Four. Mary Jones. Four. Mike Lewis. Four. Richard Lewis. I'm chair, I am staying here because um, my internet dropped out. I, I was uh, I missed a, a lot of the presentation on that one, so I'm staying abstaining. Thank you. Paul Ed Smith. Four. There's Thomas. Four. In the time line. Four. Mike Mark. Four. Thank you very much. That's carried. And um Close our business for today, and we will meet again on July the sixth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.